YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's the black stone cold Steve Austin here with another video and in this video we're here to talk about something that has been asked for a little while now by a lot of Ravens fans and that's if the Ravens should move on if the Ravens should let go if the Ravens should fire their defensive coordinator Don Martindale now first and foremost um do we think it's going to happen no not right now like in order for it to happen it would just have to take a colossal breakdown where ravens are literally just giving everything up sort of like uh that Bengals game <laughs> it would probably have to take a couple of those and even i just feel like with the relationship that he has that wink has with the coaching staff with harbaugh and whatnot i just feel like it would be so hard for them to make this move uh, and the same with Greg Roman. It's all the all the same stuff. And it's like it's almost like a gift and a curse with how they have this strong, this family oriented bond with the coaching staff and and whatnot. And it, it, that's a good thing. That's a beautiful thing. You love that, especially in a work environment. You love like when you, you, your your work family becomes family. But at the same time, when your work family becomes family, it can get in the way of business. And if you have a family member, a.k.a. Uh, a co-worker, that's making some bad decisions, it can really get in the way of business big time. And it, it, it can sort of hold the business back from the business succeeding a lot more and being a lot better than what it could be. But anyway, should the Ravens fire Wink Martindale? Well, what, what brought a lot of people to this question, to this conclusion, to this statement? One of my guys... Shout out to DTV is because he he brought this up so long ago, so long ago this season. And I remember when he first said it, he put it out there on Twitter. And, and I, this is one thing that I always say. Never, never let anybody make you feel bad for your opinion on anything, whatever it might be. Because it, especially if your opinion differs from everybody else, because just, just because your opinion is different from everybody else's, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just your opinion. And with his opinion, he, he brought this up so long ago. I feel like it was like maybe like two months ago. Uh, and he was wondering, he, he said, because the, the, the scheme is just, it's not it. It's not it. And then, and then a lot of people looked at him like it was crazy. A lot of people had all these crazy responses to him and whatnot. But I know right now, he's got to be sitting back and laughing. And it, it is a legitimate question because... With Wink, it is, and think about this too, because I know last week, last week when we brought up the question, oh, should the Ravens fire Greg Roman? A lot of people thought, oh man, that's, that's such an overreaction. You guys are overreacting just because the Ravens lost the game. It really wasn't. And now this right here, this question shows that again, that this is not a new question or anything like that. And this is not an overreaction because the Ravens won the game. They won the game yesterday against the Bears. But the thing in the Bears game, is it's not it didn't just happen in the Bears game. There's been patterns. There are patterns this year that we've been seeing over and over and over and over again. It's been repetitive madness. Repetitive madness. And the reason I say that is because with the the, the Ravens and their defense, their defense is depleted. They are hurt. You're missing Marcus Peters. That's huge. Now you're missing Deshaun Elliott. And in, in other games, you were missing different guys. But in this game against the Bears alone, you were missing Anthony Averitt as well. You were missing Jimmy Smith too. Like those are some big names to your D, especially Anthony Averitt. Jimmy Smith, he ain't been playing so much. But Anthony Averitt missing him was huge. He's been starting the whole year corner for Marcus Peters. And so he was out. So it was on Marlon Humphrey and Chris Westry. Chris Westry was having a rough game. Rough game. And the Ravens, they, and Wink, they continue to put him in bad positions. They continue to put him in bad positions. Now, I know that the play that's been getting talked about so much has been the 4th and 11. And some people are saying, oh, man, well, that's, that's on Chris Westry because he bit. He bit too early. Well, no, actually, him biting was because he didn't want to give up the first down. And if the receiver caught the ball at that first down marker, then the Bears are in field goal territory. But anyway, um, he bit, and that was rough. It was a little bit of a yikes, because again, he was struggling. 
And this was the most action that he had got all year. And he was struggling. But they gave up that touchdown. But the fact that he had been struggling this game. Now, he did make some good plays too now. He did make some good plays too. But the fact that he had been struggling. And Wink still put him on an island with the game on the line. I respect that you got trust for your players. You obviously got big trust for your players. Maybe that slogan went a little too far. Coordinators got it too, but it, it's all good. But I respect that you got trust for your players. But at the same time, you need to trust your eyes and what you've been seeing throughout the game. And the game had been a big yikes for Chris Westry. We love Chris Westry, but we got to call it what it is. He was struggling. He was struggling. So the fact that he's struggling why would you put him in such a critical, crucial, crunch time situation? I didn't even think that all them curves were going to go like that. The CR. Anyway, why would you put him in that situation? Why would you do that? Now, Harbaugh had a presser today. Well, at least when I'm recording this today, when you'll see it, it'll probably be tomorrow. But anyway, Harbaugh had a presser. And in his presser, they asked about the whole 4th and 11 call. And Harbaugh said that sometimes a quick death is the best and what he meant when he said that he was sort of de defending the call defending that blitz call and he was saying well if obviously if they would have stopped them stopped the bears that would have been the best that would have been a good scenario but then he said oh but since we didn't stop them and they scored quickly well that's another good scenario because they don't bleed out and they don't drain out the clock so we have a chance with the ball because it was seeming like it was going to be one of them games the way it's the team that has the ball last in their hands they were going to win and i was like okay cool explanation but no no yeah it did work out tyler huntley in the offense they moved the ball downfield end up getting the game winning touchdown but it should not have come to that and he even brought up the famous fourth and twelve. He was like, oh, in the 4th and 12 game against the Bengals a couple years ago, because Andy Dalton, same quarterback, against the, the, the Bengals a couple years ago, he said, oh, 4th and 12. Remember that? He said, in that game, we played Tampa 2. And look what happened. Gave up a touchdown. So he was letting it be known that things happen. And, 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 and just be, it's, it's not an end-all, be-all uh, if you had, had help on the back end. But still... Even with Harbaugh saying that, which is it is true. There's no given. And Harbaugh did say that somebody was late. Uh, uh, they had a, a late blitz or two. So somebody got after Andy Dalton just a tad bit too slow. But regardless, uh, -uh I, I can't go for that one. I'm sorry. I can't. Well, I'm, what am I apologizing for? I'm not sorry, but I can't go for that one because it's the, the situations. And again, this is not the first situation. I take you back to uh, just not even back to the Bengals game. Just all year, all year, guys have been running wide open on Ravens defense. Every single game. We think about Albert Wilson. Again. Oh, my goodness. In that Dolphins game, running free, like free. Free. There was another receiver that broke for a free one, too. I forgot who it was. But run, literally running free. Free. Like, oh, no Ravens are going to catch me because I'm running free. Like, man, we go to the, to the, uh, the Vikings game. Oh, goodness gracious. That game. What was that? Justin Jefferson. Well, that was, I think that was more on Chuck Clark, though. So, because Chuck Clark, he came up a little too much. And Jefferson, Justin Jefferson, oh, you want to come up there like that? Okay, I'm out. So I, I, won't, I won't even put that one on Wink. And the Dalvin Cook, that was just a great play. So I, don't, I, don't even, I won't even put that on Wink. I even, I'll even take out the Vikings game. But the Bengals game, your cornerbacks, your, you, you keep putting your cornerbacks on an island. They, they were try, ooh, boy, they were trying um, Anthony Averitt early on in the game, but he was holding it down. They were trying him. He was holding it down. So he showed you, hey, they keep, I'm on my island. I'm on my, I'm my favorite island. And they keep trying me, but I'm holding it down, coach. But then they were like, oh, you know what? Anthony Averitt? No, 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 no. Let's go over to that other Bama corner. Let's try Marlon Humphrey. Let's see what he's about this game. 
and Marlon Humphrey got dogged. And he was getting dogged all game. But the fact that you kept him on an island, you kept him on an island. See, th this is the frustration for me personally. Well, it's not personal, of course, but this is my own frustration with the with Wink. Again, nothing personal. Y'all already know that. Uh, but with, with Wink, it's been a problem all year long. You see guys struggling. You see guys struggling, but you continue to leave them on an island. You do not put them in positions to where they can succeed. Now, another thing with Patrick Queen, obviously recently he's been balling. The dude has been looking great. His confidence has been looking like it's way up because it has been. And I told you, all I was naive to this. I did not know that. I knew he was like a one year starter. He ain't been starting too long in the college ranks. But I did not know that he had never been the Mike linebacker. He was always a Will. And the Mike linebacker is it's just like a Batman and Robin thing. Mike is a Batman. Will is the Robin. But so, so the Ravens from jump. Not that he couldn't handle it or anything like that. But from jump, they had him playing sort of out of position. But even with that, last year, I didn't even think he did too bad. There were some times where he just looked a little bit lost, but it was a COVID season. He was a rookie. It's Ravens defense where you got to do like a 50 million things. Was, oh, okay, cool. One thing, um, you know what, we'll, we'll wait for that. But anyway, so that, well, that's with Patrick Queen. But with him, like I said, he's been balling over these past couple of weeks. But look, oh, it, it's what, that's what happens when he's put in the right position to succeed. See that immediate difference like that? Immediate difference like that. So th that's it, it's just so frustrating when you see it over and over and over and over. Chiefs game. You are there. And no, no, let's go back to the Raiders game. My guy skeptical. He, he let it be known at that first first drive. Derek Carr just missed him. But Henry Ruggs was wide open. Wide open. Running down the field. And then we, we saw Darren Waller like he was eating that game. Eating. And then we, we go to the, the – and on the last, the last drive of the game, I, I don't know what that the, – the overtime with Marlon Humphrey just stopped. I don't know what happened on that play. I don't even remember. But Zay Jones, he just, okay, oh, y'all want to leave me? Okay. And then Marlon Humphrey like, oh, you know what, I'm done. Chiefs game. We're not blitzing Patrick Mahomes nearly as we, not nearly as we used to, which was a great, a pleasant surprise. But where is where the safety go? I remember that Marlon Humphrey touchdown that he gave up to uh, to Pringle. One on one, he just got dogged. <laughs> was it Pringle? Or was it Demarcus Robinson? I forgot who it was, but he just got dogged. But on in that game, you know what? I, I give Wingers credit on that one because. Well, minus Travis Kelsey, even though Malik Harrison just they they tried they tried Malik Harrison on Travis Kelsey, he just they he couldn't hold him, and I can understand why. That's Travis Kelsey, that's one of the best, if not the best, tight end in the game. So the fact that he couldn't hold him, I, I ain't got no problem with that. But even who who do we play after that? The Lions game. Oh, the Lions game. First half, oh we had him. Oh yeah, we were doing our thing in that first half. But second half, they adjusted. And they kept hitting us with these screens, these passes behind the line of scrimmage that were going for big yards to uh, DeAndre Swift and to, I want to say, Khalif Raymond, their, their wide receiver who looks just like Willie Sneed. They were, they were getting us with it, getting us with it. Now, in that game, I do give, uh, give Wink credit, too, because he did hold the Lions down for, for the most part. And um, that, that was just a Hollywood game where he, he took all them points away from the Ravens. Um... And then there's the Colts game. Oh, gosh. The Colts game. I, that big screen play. I, I don't even remember what kind of defense we called in that game. But in that game, Anthony Avery was getting dogged. Dogged. He was getting demolished. What does this help? He, like, he was, like, he was getting dogged. Really, the whole defense that game. That game, they were all over the place. And then finally, the Ravens, their offense wasn't helping anything for the longest. But then they decided, oh, you know what? Oh, oh, we got a game tonight. All right, let, let, let's show up. But Avery was getting dogged in that game. You, you got to help these guys out. You guys too. Now, the Broncos game, that one ended up good. 
That was a good one. The Chargers game, ooh, I was surprised by how that went, but that one, it ended up good. Despite the interceptions from Lamar, despite those, it still ended up good. So they, he did his thing in that one. Because, again, it hasn't been all bad, but there's been enough bad to where it's like, how is this still happening? And one of the biggest reasons that it is that one of the biggest reasons it's so frustrating is because so many guys are out. One thing that that's, I've seen a lot of people bring up recently, maybe uh, maybe having all these good players on defense sort of covered things up for Wink. That's what a lot of people are feeling like, because he's had guys like um, he's had Earl Thomas. He's obviously had Terrell Suggs. Um, he's had, uh, who else did he have? I mean, obviously Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, um, Chuck Clark. He's had like Matt Judon. He's had, uh, some nice players in there that may sort of blanket the scheme and how bad it can be. And then they can sort of make up for it at times. And when you have that, like, because I know something, there was somebody that brought up, oh, remember when he was a defensive coordinator for the Broncos? And they had, like, the 30th ranked defense, something like this, or maybe 32nd. I think maybe it was 32nd, whatever it was. Like, he ain't have all these star players then. And I think they were saying, oh, well, a lot of his star players were injured on that Broncos team. And now, ah, we're seeing it now, too. But, it, again, the injuries are not even my thing Because I know injuries suck, injuries are terrible they, they take great players out of the game and they change everything But adjust You gotta adjust to it You, you gotta change stuff Now, let, let's look Because um, Shout out to Film Study Ravens Because, you know, he is He, he brings out the numbers Because a lot of people talk about 4th and 11, 4th and 11, 4th and 11 Because con context matters But even though the, the context with that play alone I don't like it I don't like it. And again, we talked about too with the um the fourth and whatever it was in 2018, Lamar's rookie year. When um when Baker Mayfield, when CJ Mosley got the pick, that won a division. He said he sent he sent the house then. He did cover zero then. Everybody get a man and we blitz him. So, yeah, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But guess what? He ain't have a bunch of uh injured people on the defense in that game. He sure didn't. And he had a pretty good defense back then. Really good defense back then. But anyway. Um, film study Raven. He said on the five snaps leading to the 49-yard touchdown pass that put the Bears up 13-9, the Ravens rushed six men. Uh, but then uh, they, the, the Bears passed it to the left for six yards. So that's when they rushed six. Then they rushed six men again. And the Bears passed it to the right for four yards. Uh, then he said they rushed eight men. There was an incompletion. They rushed six men. That was an incompletion. And they, then, they, <laughs> then they rushed eight men. And it was a 49-yard touchdown. So they, they sent them. They, they were sending them. And there was some good, and there was some bad, and then there was some really bad. But then he said earlier in the game, they rushed. Oh, there was a play in the fourth quarter where they rushed nine people. He said it resulted in incompletion, though. And then a play in the second quarter where they rushed seven people. It also resulted in an incompletion. Then a play in the first quarter where they rushed six people. It also resulted in an incompletion. And he said that they had a lot of success prior to giving up the touchdown, the famous fourth and 11. Well, yeah, the famous fourth and 11. Um, so I still don't like it. I don't, I don't like it. And, you know, Justin Fields and Andy Dalton, they missed some, too. They, they, they missed some guys, too. So it could have been worse. It wasn't, which is great. And, you know, I don't, really, I don't like the, all the coulda, woulda, shoulda, and all that stuff. So the end result, they won. But the end result is going to be it's gonna be out of the playoffs quickly if they don't fix this. They, they like, and, and I'm, I'm not out here saying, oh, all right, wink, you got to go. Bye. You got to get out of here. No. But it, it, it has to be fixed. It has to be. Because you, you've been getting away with it. And it's great. Oh, getting away with it is great. And if we can get, get away with it all the way to the Super Bowl, great. Awesome. But the competition is going way up. It's going way up. 
way up. You're playing the Browns twice. You're playing the Steelers twice. And I know some people say, oh, man, Browns are sorry now. It's a division game. Some people say, oh, Steelers, man, they ain't doing that. It is, it's a division game. And y'all know how these division games go. Y'all know. So you're playing these two teams. And you're playing the Bengals again who already whooped you. And they took advantage of you not giving your cornerbacks help. And it's like the, the, the worst part about the Bears game yesterday was that, again, it's been the same thing. If your cornerbacks, you, 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 you're starting cornerbacks this year. If they've been needing help, you ain't been giving it to them. But if they've been needing help, you've been putting them on an island and they've been struggling. How could somebody who just got activated last week and they're starting for the first time in forever? Maybe I think their first start ever. How could you keep putting him on an island? How, how, how could you do that? I don't, I don't get that, man. I don't understand that. I really don't. So this has to get fixed like ASAP. It got to get fixed like yesterday for real. Because if it doesn't get fixed, <laughs> might as well start looking at next year. Like you, you, you're going up against, again, Browns twice, Steelers twice, Bengals. You're going up against Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you, <laughs> you're going against um, Matt Stafford. Oh, like... If you don't fix this, you are going to be reminded very fast that of, of how much it needs to be fixed. You're going to be reminded very fast. So th this is what, again, this is not a, a, an, an overreaction to one game. This has been happening throughout the season, throughout the season. So it's not anything new. And we know Wink, Wink got that. And John Harbaugh said it, too. On that fourth, he said, he, he said, hey, Wink, Wink stuck to the game plan. That's been one of my biggest problems this year, too. One of my biggest problems. Offense, defense, definitely defense, though. It's been one of my biggest problems this year with this team is that, all right, I know they have game plan. I know they create game plans. We know that. They create game plans every single week for every team that they go against. But if it's not working, if you see somebody struggling, you got to make adjustments. You got to make adjustments. You have to. If you don't make adjustments, people are going to adjust to you. And if they adjust to you without you returning the favor, you're done. You're done. So hopefully they can get this thing fixed and get this thing right. Because if they don't, oh, oh, you get, oh, they get a big test next week with them Browns coming to town. Sunday night football, oh, the world is watching. You under the lights. So they better be on point. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Mm, mm, mm. We out.